right, so you've been out fishing all day and you come in ready to head home and you get to the parking lot and your truck and trailer are gone. What do you do? Well, hopefully we never experience that because I think it's every angler's worst nightmare. But let's go over some steps that you can take to kind of protect yourself from that ever happening. Because honestly, when it comes to criminals, if they want something, they're going to take it. So I've worked in the security field for the last 14 years. You know, even more than that, when your own father vows to kill you, <laughs> when you're a toddler, you live your entire life in a very hyper-defensive, worst-case scenario frame of mind. There's advantages and disadvantages to that. Obviously, I have mega trust issues. However, I also go in immediately, I've already prepared for the worst possible thing that can happen, and as it de-escalates, I'm happy, because now it didn't happen. You can take that kind of that same scenario with you when you're thinking about how to protect your vehicle, how to protect yourself. You know, our boat launches, even if they're a high traffic boat launch or they're remote, they're all susceptible to some type of vehicle prowls or some type of uh, nefarious activities. When I got hit up at Lake Samish boat launch, this has been probably 18 years ago now, I was the only truck in the whole parking lot. Now that boat launch has at times been fairly notorious for break-ins. And when the cop responded to my break-in, he just gave me a number and said, here you go, there's a claim number. We're not gonna do anything. They don't have the resources. They're not gonna be taking fingerprints and doing all that crap. So you need to understand that you're pretty much on your own. Preventative measures are the best and we'll go over that. But what he told me was they get break-ins on the busiest summer days when the parking lot's packed. And if you think about that, both sides of that coin are prime opportunities. If there's only a couple vehicles in the parking lot, then you're sitting ducks full of people and, and full of vehicles, then it's more opportunities for the criminals. Honestly, the other people in the parking lot, they don't know who owns what vehicle. And yeah, they might see somebody smash a window out, but we live in the day and age where everybody just films stuff and nobody acts and nobody tries to intervene. The film and the, and the photos, obviously, yes, they can help. But again, police just don't have the resources to really go after people anymore. So unless it's a violent crime, which property crime is not a violent crime, unless it's a violent crime, they're probably not going to pursue it. If you get good photos of the vehicle they were driving, if you get license plate shots, that stuff helps and you can put them on social media blast, but vehicle is probably stolen, plates were probably stolen. Honest to goodness, you know, just make sure you, you keep yourself safe. Take some precautionary measures just to kind of maybe make your rig look like not that easy of a target. So let's go into that and I'm gonna start in the truck. So there's a lot of things you can do in your vehicle to not look like a good target. And some of those things are the most obvious, don't leave crap on your seats. Don't leave stuff laying out that even looks remotely like it's worth a dollar. You can get your windows smashed simply for your car charger, for your cell phone, because somebody thinks they can get a dollar off it. Put them somewhere, take them with you on the boat, whatever you need to do, just don't leave stuff obviously in plain sight in your vehicle. And something as simple as a towel, or in my case, a dog blanket in the back seat. I got both my windows smashed out at Lake Samish because I left a dog blanket in the back seat. And I think the moron thought that something was underneath the blanket. There was nothing underneath the blanket. Cost me about 450 bucks in new glass. You know, you got towels or something, your kids leave clothing items, anything like that. That stuff needs to go somewhere. You should just take it with you on the boat or put it somewhere in the back of the truck or something where it's easy to get to where you're not going to be losing windows over it. Another thing that I personally do, I open all this stuff. It's empty. I leave my glove box open. In most instances, somebody's going to come by your vehicle and glance in the windows. They're going to see if there's a viable target. In my situation, it was just a dog blanket in the back seat. They thought something was hiding underneath it. They decided to go for it. You're showing, I got nothing in here. I'm gonna tell you something, even paperwork, your insurance cards. If your insurance company puts your home address on your insurance cards, get them to stop doing that. If they do, do not leave these in your glove box. Don't leave them in the door of your vehicle. Don't leave them anywhere and I'll tell you why. Criminals, and they do this at movie theaters too, but a criminal will pull up to a boat launch and they'll see this insurance card you know in your door card or or in your glove box they think your address is on it they know you're out fishing you're going to be occupied for a few hours they will take this and go to your address you can google that 
I'm not making this stuff up. So they will go to your address because they know you're out fishing. Well, are your kids home? Is your wife home alone? It's all stuff that, you know, you just need to think about from a protection standpoint. All this stuff. You see, I keep it in Ziploc bags because when I get out of my truck, I take it and throw it on the boat. And that way it's not getting wet while it's out with me, but I've got all my particulars ready to go in one Ziploc. And I just pick it up, throw it on the boat. When I get out of the boat, I throw it back in the truck. And we all love our jams when we're driving. So if you've got an iPod or, you know, those little mini ones or any kind of a music deal, you might want to think about converting that over to a USB drive. This is what's called just a USB thumb drive. They come in all shapes and sizes. You can get enough memory on this to put every freaking song in the world on them. But this thing right here costs eight bucks. And if some knucklehead steals it, then all he's got is got to listen to my taste in music. <laughs> But it's eight bucks. I got four of the things. I made copies. So if I ever lose one or if I forget it in the truck and it gets stolen, I'm out nothing. You know, the cool thing about those too is I can just pull it out and throw it in my pocket. Okay, a couple other things you can do. You can invest in the wheel locks. We've all seen them. The anti-theft extendable locks that go in your steering wheel. You can invest in one of those, but I watched a video of a professional car thief that cut through one of those in 14 seconds. So they're a deterrent, but nothing is foolproof. Another thing that I would highly advise, that is kill switches. Now you can have a kill switch professionally installed at an automotive place of some sort, but there's a trick to that also. When you are doing the paperwork to have a kill switch installed, do not use your home address. This is another thing that I personally experienced. I used my home address two weeks later. I came out, stereo equipment missing, CDs missing, all this stuff. And I was like, oh, crap. The only people that could have done it were the ones that installed my stereo equipment and my alarm. Uh, they kept a second remote for themselves and just disarmed it and did whatever they wanted because there was no alarm. If you have a kill switch or a car alarm professionally installed somewhere, give them a P.O. box or give them somebody else's address. You do not want them coming back buy your address and seeing your vehicle sitting in your driveway because now they have probably a spare key fob to shut your alarm off. They also know where everything's mounted so they can easily disable a kill switch. So if you got a mechanically inclined uncle, cousin, friend, or if you're mechanically inclined, just do a kill switch. It's the easiest. I personally also pull a fuse out of my fuse box that completely disables my truck when I'm sitting at a launch. So you can get in, push all the buttons you want. It's not starting, plain and simple. Okay, when we move towards where the truck and trailer join, there are locks that are available to put on these. Now, these locks are not impervious, but they're a deterrent. It's just worth the few bucks you're gonna spend to take the initiative to have locks on your stuff and look like a harder target. Somebody's beating on a lock with a sledgehammer, people are gonna notice. And there's a good chance, especially on some of our lakes, you're gonna hear it. And you can maybe motor that way and see what's going on. And if they've got a sledgehammer in their hand, well, you can see my old lock here pretty straightforward locks the receiver to the truck and then you also have these hitch pin locks you can pick up it's worth having this versus just a pin going through that anybody can pull out i would highly recommend getting some high temperature spray paint crawl underneath your truck spray your catalytic converters with that stuff if you can get them engraved with your vin number and stuff like that Anything you can do so if somebody slides under your rig, they're like, maybe it's not worth the effort. But just keep that stuff in mind. You know, hopefully we all go out and we, and we get to fishing. And we never experience that crap. But I know Lake Samish is active again. And that really is why I'm doing this video. It really bothers me because it went quiet for a lot of years. And I was hoping that POS got killed or put in prison. But something you're going to face at any boat launch at any given time. There's just people out there that... That don't live right i wish we all lived in mayberry too we just don't if your vehicle's disabled if there's nothing inside that's of value that they can steal you're out a window and frankly in this day and age that's best case scenario you can easily replace a window it might be a cold windy ride home but you got your truck you got your trailer you can get your boat out of the lake you know when you call a tow company you need not only your vehicle towed but you also need your your trailer towed that's a pain in the butt but if your truck and trailer are gone, now they have to bring a trailer 
and who's got a trailer to fish your boat so it can really be an absolute nightmare so the best case scenario is forethought put yourself in a position not to experience that do all the due diligence you can on your side to keep that from happening and hopefully it's something that you never have to face now if all that fails the worst case scenario you lose your stuff and you got to make an insurance claim you want to check your policies because most policies for bass boats cover the boat the motor and the trailer and some policies don't even cover the trailer Trailer. So you really want to look at that. Another thing I do is I make a completely separate list of all my equipment like trolling motor, grass, power poles. If my stuff's in a box, I claim it. All my rods and reels, miscellaneous tackle, keep receipts in a boat file so you have them so you can prove that yes, <laughs> I paid X amount of dollars for a fishing pole. My policy consists of a policy for the boat, motor, and trailer, and I have a separate policy for my equipment, trolling motor, grass, poles, all this kind of stuff. And I update that thing every six months it's on an Excel spreadsheet. I send it to my insurance gal and just say, hey, you know, these things are used items now. Their MSRP is this, but now they're worth this. So everything you can do to protect yourself will pay off. If you just take that steps and do your due diligence, make it important. If the worst case scenario should unfold, hopefully at least you're covered as best you can be. You know, if you guys have any ideas or things that you implement when you go out, feel free to throw it in the comments and share and, and help others in the process. There's one last piece to all of this is personal safety. If you fish solo, even if you're with a buddy, the most vulnerable times that you're at a boat launch is typically in the morning when you're launching because it's dark and you're not really paying attention to your surroundings because you're going around trying to prep your boat and do all your stuff and, and get everything ready to launch. That is a time when somebody can swoop in, basically try to take your stuff by force. There's only one way to really prepare against that scenario and i'll leave that up to all of you as individuals you know keep those things in mind take the precautions look out for your stuff look out for yourselves take care of yourself out there and hopefully you avoid any of these nightmares